Hi everyone, Nick Russo here, and welcome back to the BGP multi-homing series. This video doesn't introduce any new technologies per se, but combines them in a new way. We'll use additional paths in a BGP-free core to enable ECMP. In a previous video, we used add path for primary backup routes, so this is another tool for your toolbox. At a minimum, R7 must send additional paths to R2 so that both R4 and R5 can be used for egress routing for traffic flowing from left to right. This negotiated capability allows BGP speakers to advertise multiple paths to the same prefix within the same BGP session as seen in a previous video. When R2 receives the paths, it will install both for equal cost load sharing using iBGP multipath. What makes this video interesting is the minimalist implementation I've configured, which we'll explore in a few minutes. The routing flow is straightforward. R6 continues to advertise its IPv4 and IPv6 prefixes to R4 and R5. Since no BGP policies are applied, both egress PEs will select the eBGP path from R6 as their best path, rather than the iBGP paths from one another. These best paths are advertised to R7, and add path is not necessary here because R7 will automatically receive the best eBGP paths from each egress PE. Once R7 has both paths, it must send them to R2, the ingress PE. Notice we are targeting R2 now, not R3, because R3 is a BGP-free core router. In MPLS designs, the ingress PE needs visibility of the additional paths, not the core routers. R2 will then install both paths using iBGP multipath, which we've seen many times. Before we jump into the demo, you should know about my Cisco Advanced Routing courses at Pluralsight. Rather than teach various topics in isolation, I developed unique, large-scale topologies to illustrate how the technologies interact. If you need to brush up on your routing protocols, tunneling techniques, or management services, click the link in the video description to get started. Now, on to the demo. To begin, I've displayed the BGP configuration on R7, which is the route reflector. Notice that the policy templates remain unchanged from the previous video, both of which use route reflection, but with IPv6 running labeled unicast. The configuration under each address family is identical, so we'll focus on IPv6. We instruct R7 to select the best two paths for each address family, ensuring that the paths to R6's loopback via R4 and R5 are selected. Then, we enable the add path send capability towards R2. Notice the minimalism. We didn't enable add path at the template level, so it doesn't apply to all peers. We also didn't enable add path receive from R2 because R2 would never send R7 additional paths in our current topology. The directionality of the add path capability gives you granular control over routing advertisements. We can confirm this by checking the neighbor details for 10.0.0.2 and filtering on the add path text. For both IPv4 and IPv6, Add path send is advertised to R2, meaning R7 can send additional paths towards R2. Add path receive is received from R2, meaning that R2 can accept additional paths from R7. Let's check the IPv4 BGP table to ensure R7 selected both paths. For R6's IPv4 loopback, we see the best path is via R4, due to the greater than character, and the additional path is via R5 due to the A character. Notice there isn't a B for backup here. Because the route reflector isn't in the forwarding path, we don't need to install this as a local backup. That's why I omitted the additional paths install backup command on R7. Let's quickly check IPv6 just for completeness using a similar command. The behavior is the same. The backup path via R5 is marked as an additional path to be advertised to R2. Next, let's head to R2, the ingress PE. I've displayed the BGP configuration and scrolled to the bottom since the templates remain unchanged from the previous video. R2 enables additional path reception from R7 under each address family and enables iBGP multipath for up to two routes. 
We haven't enabled DMZ link bandwidth, so we can safely assume this is an ECMP design. Let's check the BGP table for the route to R6's IPv4 loopback prefix. R2 received both routes, each marked with a different RX path ID and both being used for multipath. Let's confirm the load sharing by checking the FIB details. Notice that the next hop is R3 via Ethernet 0 1 in both cases, but also that the paths use different labels. When R3 receives label 3001, which was mapped to 10.0.0.4/32, it will send traffic towards R4. When R3 receives label 3000, which was mapped to 10.0.0.5, it will send traffic towards R5. This is the power of an MPLS enabled core. These load sharing determinations are made at the ingress PE rather than across many core routers. Let's also test the IPv6 prefix hosted by R6, which is more complicated. We see both paths enabled for multipath, one from R4 and one from R5. Each route has its own BGP label, which was allocated by the egress PE to describe the prefix in question. Let's check the IPv6 FIB details to explore the label stacking process. This time, two labels are pushed. When R4 is the egress PE, label 4008 is pushed first, followed by 3001. When R5 is the egress PE, label 5008 is pushed first, followed by 3000. I used the same label values in the slides from earlier to make this easier to understand if you need to review it. 